You are listening to all burgundy and gold, everything with the urban sports scene on Fox Sports Radio 96.9 FM and 1340 AM, Hopewell, Virginia. Ray, Mo, and Wole are your hosts. Also, well, I'm about to say something else, but it's not happening. Please subscribe to our <laughs> podcast on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. Just search all burgundy and gold, everything with the urban sports scene. Also, tweet us at urban sports scene and hit us up on our urban sports scene Facebook page. Before we get to the pregame, Ray, you got some some hitting some um headline news for us, right? right some breaking news on this night that we are recording. Dan Graziano of ESPN pretty much put an article out there saying that Commissioner NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is still not planning to release the results of the investigation into the workplace culture of the Washington Football Team. And he quote he quoted Goodell as to say, "I do think he's held accountable." Speaking of Dan Snyder. More importantly, steps were put in place to make sure it doesn't happen again. Guys, I want to get your thoughts because we already had a discussion before we came on about the culture of the owners and <laughs> and the commissioner. But what does it say to the victims and to you know those who are campaigning for this to be released because of the nature of what took place behind the scenes there in Washington? You want to start it off, Mo? And to answer the question, I just think, you know, I think it's a big slap in the face to the victims and all those that were involved um, all over the sake of money, all over the sake of, you know, keeping some secrets in-house so that um, a lot of people aren't exposed. Um, it's an unfortunate situation, um, but then again, Goodell gets paid by these owners. He's employed by these owners. It's, you know... You're not going. You're not going to. You're not going to bite the hand of the people that feed you. So, ultimately, he runs the show. That's the route that he wants to go. Uh-huh. It's going to be another PR nightmare for the NFL. They're going to try to sweep under the rug, and people are going to love to watch football on Sundays and eventually forget about it if they if no you know if no noise is made. Uh-huh. Um, no, I, day, no, no, I, uh-huh. it's just it's just unfortunate, man. No, I agree. I think you you definitely feel bad for the victims that, that like you know their work their their voices aren't heard. Um, you, but you want you do when we all uh, we we see it we've seen it for years though like, and we said this off you know off air like the owners they're a mafia man it's 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 a team man you got the Godfather, you got you got your little underlings, you got you know I mean you got everything man. and 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 I guess you can look at. What's the dude um, on Godfather that's like not related to him, but like the advisor? That's like Roger Goodell. He's like the he's like the advisor because he's not really a power. He's just the advisor. Um, he's Tom. There you go. He's Tom. He's the counselor. Counselor. I don't know the term, but yeah, he's like Tom on uh, on Godfather. So, but it's a shame. Um, we've seen this though with, with a lot of issues though. Just not just this. Um, even with like the flags, you know, kneeling and whatnot, just how they kind of try to cover certain, I mean, how they talked about that. The owners are like just an interesting mob of individuals and they all kind of stick together. And it is what just for their, for just because again, it's for the money. It's all about the money. It's all about, you know, what the NFL brings financially. And it's always, I mean, the NFL is, it is what it is. It's a, it's a money-making sport, you know, in, in the U S so it's a shame. Um, it's sad because we, 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 we've noticed this in terms of society in general, period, that money can, you make enough money, you can ignore a lot. And it's sad to say that, but that's the thing that happens in society. Real quick. So Goodell also said that the league would be willing to cooperate with the congressional investigation. So what does that mean? You're going to release it to them and expect that Congress will not say anything? Because once the feds get involved to me, it's harder to kind of keep things under wraps. So we'll see how that goes. And this also, comes, this also comes out on a day where it was a report saying that Washington is dead last in ticket sales. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. right now, <laughs> it's not looking good for the Washington football team off the field and on the field, two and five, going into Denver. There's so many questions. And mm-hmm. I guess that's where we get started here tonight, guys, because yeah. we still got a lot to talk about. Team heading up to Denver. And, yeah, people saying Denver's not that good, but, hey, Washington's struggling as well. Yeah, um, yeah the Denver. Um, we ain't talking about the Packers. We're going straight to Denver? We, we no, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just saying that. No, okay. No, do, you, do, do your thing, sir. Oh, okay. No, no. We right. The Washington football team uh, lost the Packers 24-10 um, Sunday. 
I'm trying to think of what I want to say. Uh, Mo, <laughs> thoughts of the game, my man. <laughs> I, think, I think you were at a loss of words just now because I, sure did, I, think, you said, I think you said it all last week. Oh, I did. I think, was I kept, kept the buck, right? Yeah. I think, I think you said it all last week after, you know, after. Oh, the sweat. Yeah, I was sweating like, oh, no way. Yeah, the, all the passion. That's right. All the passion. Out, okay. I was, so, I was baby boy. I was baby boy Wole. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Man, the, the combination of the Kansas City Chiefs and the bad man coming to town had you had you on fire. And they had but, me, um, bro. They had me. <laughs> I, mean, I think I think we all knew the outcome of the game. Yeah. Me and you and I believe um, what was my guy's name? Uh HTTR and Bless. What's his brother? Felix. Oh, Felix, 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 Felix. Felix, Felix, Felix. 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 <laughs> Felix, I remember that. The handle of the fly, I remember the name. Goodness gracious. Uh, H-T-T-R and bless. Bless. Yes, that's yeah. Felix. Yeah. Uh, the conversation we had with Felix in terms of, you know, how this team was going to possibly bounce back or just keep sliding. And I think, I think in watching the game, Aaron Rodgers was too comfortable. I mean, even with the three, the three sacks, you know, that came mm-hmm. from um, three of the line, uh, Three linemen. Yeah, three you got uh, Jonathan Allen, Allen Montez Sweat. Sweat. Yeah, I think the pain have a sack. I don't know. If I think was pain. it pain or settle? I don't, I don't think settle. I thought it was pain. I could be wrong. I thought it was pain. I could be wrong though. But go ahead. No, I think maybe Allen had two sacks. I think Allen had two sacks. I think Allen, probably Allen had two sacks. Two Allen had two sacks. sacks. Mm-hmm. So even with some of the, the, you know, I think the Washington football team had moments in terms of where they was getting pressure on Aaron Rodgers, but that that dynamic combination between him and Devonte Adams was on display. Mm-hmm. And then eventually, once that once that broke things open, everybody else started getting open. Alan Lazar was a good target. Um, yeah. He was he was wheeling and wheeling. You know, he was doing he was doing Aaron Rodgers type of things at home in Lambo. I mean, yeah. yet it, I believe the team hadn't won there since 1986 I mean, in Lambo Field before pre Brett pre Brett Favre. So um, it was. To me, it was exactly what I thought would happen. We, we coming into the game, we had a, uh, we were talking about how poor <laughs> the defense was, right? We were mm-hmm. talking about like how the how the back end was not playing well. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were talking about how the defensive line needed to get pressure, and a lot of the things that we talked about came to fruition. The D line did get a little bit of pressure, but eventually, ultimately, it wasn't consistent enough to to get him off of his mark. I seen Aaron Rodgers rolling out. I seen him throwing across his body for touchdowns. I seen him throwing across deep down the field. I seen him throwing intermediate. And um, he was highly efficient. I think he had like seven incompletions all game, if I'm not mistaken. And so, and um, you know, he utilized his weapons against the weakest part of the Washington football team's defense, which is the secondary. Mm-hmm. And um, they they made something happen. You know what I mean? Uh, 24 to 10, I think the score did not reflect the game. I never thought that the Washington football team was close. Uh, I mean – they played what, what I liked about the game. They played the ball control game. They were involved. They were in the game because they wouldn't let Aaron Rodgers on the field. Um, they did a good job by doing that. It's something I've always stated. Like if you, they were doing smart stuff too. They were doing something similar that I saw Carolina do against Washington last season, where they would snap the ball probably around five seconds um, in terms of the offense, kind of like letting the clock go down, snap it five seconds so they can have win more of the time possession game, uh, run the football. Scott Turner had a good game plan. Um, oh, I was about to say, was you going to yeah. give him credit? Take a game plan. I mean, I didn't like what he did. In the we red showed zone. him love. We showed him love. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, yeah. The, he, the uh, players didn't execute this game. Yeah, but uh, also, like, I didn't like. I mean, me, me and Ray talked about this prior. I mean, on a prior show, but I didn't like his red zone, like play calling. I thought it was terrible. Ah. Uh, um, yeah. Ah, okay, people agree with me. So people, people agree with me. You you, 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 you harp on that third and two though. Well, okay, yeah. agree with third and two. That don't I, make look, you right, sir. I may agree. Like that you, don't get you, you harp on your thing. You make, doesn't make you right. I'm just saying, it don't make me right either. Oh no, no. Right. You mentioned I got people. You sound yeah. like Devin oh, Haney. I got too. more followers. You I got, got people more too. followers. You got people too. Look, look, look. You got people too. Look, I'm not even doing that, bro. I said you got people too. I'm just saying that. No, look, he it's arbitrary. Devin Haney on the side. You rather it's, be it's, Devin it's Haney or T. Ray, Ray Gigi, it's arbitrary. This is arbitrary. <laughs> I, got I, got, I got people. He said, I think you got was, people to Mo, say, Ray. You saw that, Jay Mo? I got That's people. I got people. You I got people. Bro. I got people. Bro. <laughs> but well, anyway, back to the point anyway. Um, I was, I'm going to say, personally, I wasn't a fan right of his red. I wasn't a fan of his red zone play calling. Um, but I thought the defensive, I thought defense played well. The landing plan, the linebacker worked. And that worked. It was something that should have happened. It worked. Um, he did well in the box. Uh, but, you know, like you said, Mo, Aaron Rodgers is Aaron Rodgers, man. He's comfortable. Even when he's in pressure, he's uncomfortable. 
it don't matter. That's the type of dude he is. Like, even when you do get somebody around him, he's not panicking. So he, he just, he, that's what he was doing. He was like, all right, you can, you can step, you can come, you can show me some pressure. I'll sidestep it. I'll step up in the pocket. I'm mobile. I'll run. You know, if you don't have, I'll run if I have to. So he was, he was not, he was Aaron Rodgers. He did what he had to do. Um, Lazar, Lazar, uh, killed, I'm gonna say killed, but he fried. No, he did. He fried Danny Johnson. Um, they doubled Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams didn't get over 100 yards, but he's still Devontae Adams, a beast. He had the touchdown. Um, but I mean, I thought it'd be worse to be honest with you. I mean, going into the game, I thought the game would be far they worse than what it was. 37 to 17. Yeah, yeah, so I told you, I thought it'd be far worse than what it was. Um, so I was like surprised that it was even, too, but I, I, I like the game plan. So go back to what Ray and about. Scott Turner, I like the game plan because you allow the defense to play better. Because by keeping Aaron Rodgers off the field, you're limiting his options. You're limiting no his punts. opportunities. They did not punt at all. Yeah, but you're limiting. See, you would think though, if he didn't punt, he would score course. more. <laughs> Seriously, well, I'm keeping him up. Here we go. It comes back to the quarterback. And, and Mo, I'm about to give you a history lesson. Mo, you know who Jeff Rutledge is. I've heard the name. Don't know the name. <laughs> you know, you know who Ricky oh, Irvin is. is. Oh. Ricky Irvin's all right, though. I met him. He's okay, cool no, 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 no. You, cool you got to see where I'm going, though. Of course, right. Ricky Irvin, <laughs> Jeff Rutledge, B. Mitch, uh, even on the basketball side in the DMV, Liddell Eccles, these are called Mo fan favorites. Yeah. And Taylor Heineke is now <laughs> the next person in line Ray. that is a fan favorite. However, Taylor Heineke now, I think we have a big enough sample size between the playoff start to now. That man is what? As a starter, I'm going to say one and six. They won two games. He didn't start the Giants game, though, did he? Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Okay, he he's did. two and six then as a starter, my yeah. bad. He's so two six. I think we have on this show seen enough of Taylor Heineke to you know that we need a change or the team needs a change. I'm just saying we're in favor of it. But according to the fan base, Heineke's the best option. You don't have much behind him, but there's some guys sitting out there. We ain't going to say who. But, I will. I'll, I'll um, say I don't care. Also, of course, <laughs> Washington, they, they brought in some running backs. Carry on Johnson being one. To work out. We, like you know, Johnson, we, we, we had some feedback from our homegirl, Donna, who said, um, Donna Hopkins, by the way, no relation to the, the, the former kicker. But she said, <laughs> she said, let's give Jared Patterson some, yeah. some, some more reps instead of bringing in a, another running back. However, changes are being made. Everywhere it seems like but quarterback. Do you guys think it's, it's a change needed or is it a change coming, especially if you go to Denver and lose? Mo, you got it, bro. Where are you going to go, Ray? The guy you brought in to be the starter is hurt. A report came out last week that it's Man. still several weeks away from coming back. He's a 39-year-old <laughs> <he's a> <laughs> journeyman quarterback. <laughs> he's a 39-year-old journeyman quarterback. You can cam, <laughs> you can you can cough cam, all of that. It's exactly like what the cam is doing nowadays. Cam, oh, cam. It ain't old cam no more. It's no cam. <laughs> okay. So but, but, at this point of the season, at this point of the season, you're going to, uh, uh, Fitzpatrick's not an option. Kyle Allen has done what in his career to earn outside of his first five starts where he won his first five games. Uh, if you want to, you want to note that let's go to the next, let's go to the next 11 after that. And in, in, in the year with Alex Smith, he got hurt. He's not reliable either. I'm not going that route. Um, I'd rather go with the kid that's playing. Um, at least he has a record with 17. I told y'all last year, the quarterback situation sucked. You guys looked at me like I was crazy. I told you that the worst thing that happened to this team was that they went to the playoffs with that sorry record. All right, here we go. Was, to, now you're going to beat your chest. I know, well, I was waiting for this. Hold on, you're not beating my chest. What I'm I saying. I'm waiting for this, George. I'm, I'm not beating my I'll chest. I'm, I'm sorry. He's right, though. He's right, though. He's right. What I'm saying is the quarterback situation is why I felt that way. And that has not improved. The offseason addition that you brought in is out. Heineke played a great playoff game last year. He even got some respect and kudos from me for the first three weeks. I, he started. I saw some. I saw some some good things from him. But he's come back down to the pack, as we expected. Nobody thought that that Heineke ride was going to last forever, right? So mm -hmm. we were just waiting to see how long he can carry the mantle. And it's starting to. He's starting to regress. 
He's throwing high. He's throwing all over the place. He's missing high. Like he's he's giving himself up at the goal line, and he's inches away from the touchdown. Like, which is a, it was a terrible call anyway. But things like that are all adding to it. Okay, like, so Mo, listen, I hear what you're saying, and I respect everything. But we did this for the post game show. They cut Hopkins and brought in Blewett. Blewett wasn't the option either. That man ain't kicked a, a, a NFL he blew it. field goal. Blew it, he blew it. kicked the field goal in the NFL, right? But they made the change. Right. So what makes you think that Kyle Allen may not be inserted into the lineup after the bye week, considering even though he doesn't look like the option, neither did Blewett, but here he is. So you can't predict what this team is going to do. And going back to Heineke, you picked Heineke to beat the Saints, and you was like loving that dude. I love, I love how you jumped off that train. So All right, man. No, we no, no, no. But, but let's introduce let's, 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 let's introduce the homie though. Let's introduce the no, homie. Though. <laughs> All right, right now we have Sports Journey's watch the football team reporter Lake Lewis Jr. online on the show. What's going on, Lake? What's up, fam? How you guys <laughs> doing? Good, man. So. What's up, Blake? So we're we're talking about the Heineke experience. Some sense to these guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the Heineke experience. Like we're basically like we're basically saying, you know what? Let's just it's a wrap. Let's cut he's it. He's a he's a he's a he's a career backup. That's thank what, you. Yes, I'm okay. We're all in agreement. If they said they're they wanted to bring him back next year as a backup, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. But mm. as far <laughs> as the guy that's just directing the train on the tracks, nah. <laughs> so what would you do in this situation? What would you do with it? What would you do with like? Would you go the Kyle Allen route? Would you look out? Would you look outside and bring somebody in, or it just it is what it is? You can't, man. I mean, you know, you listen. We all know all five of us would love Deshaun Watson here. I mean, let's call it like it is. Yeah. But because of what's going on with this organization and what happened, he can't come here. He can't. No, sir. Can't. No, sir. I mean, it would look, it would look really, really, bad. really wait, suspect. Wait, 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 wait. It's all right, bad. No, Dude, no, we, I mean, it's all right, bad. I mean, does it look two two negatives can make a positive? No, it can't. Yeah, the, the, the 22 can't, though. <laughs> Oh, 22 shit. can't and <laughs> not with the history of what's going on here that happened here nah man that that would that would signal look if you if you wanted dan snyder to really really have to sell this team let him bring deshaun watson here and watch what happens hey. <laughs> I mean, what, what did they do in oakland what did they do in oakland and jacksonville at the top of the state they put tarp up to exactly. cover the seat. that's yeah. what's gonna happen around here yeah oh, man yeah. Only mean, people, don't win it don't win it like kind of Hide every hides everything though. If the I mean, Coach here throws like five touchdown passes in game one, see, see, Santa scratch their eyes like what happened? This 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 <laughs> guy right here, this this guy right here, y'all co-host right here. If it's not Jerry Judy, it's I mean, come on, man. He's not gonna let it go. You, you put it like this. My, my man, you got a better chance of Jerry Judy ending up here than you do. Deshaun. Oh, man. I'm <laughs> no. I'm Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, though, late, because I asked Candy Waller this a couple weeks ago. Shout out to her. I said, with the way the Sean Taylor announcement went down, if the team was undefeated and playing just dominating football, would anybody have complained as much if they were winning? But since yeah. all this stuff is going on, of course, we're going to pounce on, man, three days notice. The stadium would be <laughs> packed, first of all, because they were winning. Nah, so it they, wouldn't matter as much. Winning does cure a whole lot. So it does. if Deshaun comes in and wins, I think that people might be like, you know what? I don't man. see nothing. Nah, I don't listen, see this, 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 Deshaun, they could have been undefeated. They, they, excuse me. They could have been undefeated. And Deshaun Watson, um, it still wouldn't be a good look. It, it just it, it wouldn't be a good look at all, guys. It just it just would. Um, we, we were just talking about victims in the early segment. Can you imagine? Can you imagine bringing that man here with the history here? And I mean, it, it would it would be a horrible look. And 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 just and, and to go back to the Sean Taylor thing, the three days notice was a slap in the face. But the way you could just tell it was ragtag, the way it was on the field, the mm -hmm. way they were in front of the, the porta potties. I mean, it just mm. it wasn't properly planned for somebody of that magnitude. And and, and 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 I'm gonna say this. You know, <laughs> you hear that part. I don't have nobody saying this. I don't have any, I haven't heard anybody say this. There's no way Jason Wright was involved in this. Let me just say this. Yeah. Mm. Listen, look at our faces and mm. let's be honest. 
Mm. He had to fall on the sword. Mm. <laughs> and Damn. he's a former Stop. player. You don't think he knew what Sean Taylor was to this organization, to these yeah. fans? Of course yeah. he did. Um, so for him to come out and say, I apologize, come on, man. That was a director from up top. No, I mean, yeah. There's no doubt in my mind about that. That's how bad that was, though. So mm. anyway, to go back to what Ray said, they could have been undefeated. And that still was a drop of a ball. Big one. Mm. Big, big one. That they're not recovering from that one. That hurt a lot of people. Yeah, it did hurt a lot. Of, it hurt a lot of the fan base. You see it on, well, you well, see it on social media. We'll put it like this: Joe Gibbs wasn't there. <clears throat> Santana Moss wasn't there. Uh, None of his former teammates were there. I mean, Clinton Portis was there. there. Yeah, he's here it. already. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, y'all didn't find that odd. No, I thought it was crazy. I thought it even the whole setup was. I mean, I felt like to me, just the like it's Sean Taylor, so it should have been. You should have had noticed ASAP, and then it should have been it should have been a bigger thing to retire Sean Taylor's jersey. You know, like I think Felix was on the show uh, last week, and Felix had a you know he was like, "What are other players that you can retire like Joe, like a like uh, Daryl Green. Green and whatnot?" Which made which is totally true. Like I'm not totally true, but in terms of current, you know, the current Washington football team fan base, like a lot of do, a lot of a lot. Now we're at this point in time, it's wild, but a lot of people. They remember Sean Taylor. That's what they remember. They remember Sean Taylor. They remember that he's like more of this mythical figure now, too. So right. to a point where you got to treat that di- differently. It's it's a more of a pop culture effect to it when you're talking about Sean Taylor, too. So it's like, to me, it should have been like, damn it, like you won the Super Bowl. Like, for real, like you got to treat it that big. Like, it's that I heavy. Mean, I mean, on here, I got like the last four or five days. Mm-hmm like three, four times a day getting hit up about Coldplay being at uh, FedEx Field. The team's <laughs> sending that to us. <laughs> so I'm yeah. like, you, you wait, hold on. In June of next year? So I'm saying. And you banging this out to us every day like this? And you give us that that memorandum so three days before the game about Sean Taylor? Come on, man. <laughs> of course that was a rush job. Of yeah, course yeah. it was. It was That's not good. Done. I mean, Lake, you don't have no intel as to, like, what went into the thinking of that? Like, why then? That's the key word, what you just said, Ray. What went into the thinking? No, there was no thinking. Oh. That's the problem. There That's was the no problem. thinking. Terrible. And they really felt like, and, and I know they did this. There's no question in my mind. Everybody in that room out there will tell you the same thing in the media. Mm-hmm. They had all this nonsense going on. Mm-hmm. You know, they they had the the females who were, who were really pushing to have, you know, with their, through their lawyer yeah, talking yeah. about the, you know, the um, non-disclosure, all this stuff was coming back and they're losing on top of that, yeah. you know? So you start creating stories. Why Dustin Hopkins get cut this week? I mean, <laughs> I'm just asking, you yeah, couldn't yeah. wait another week for the buy. You, you, you telling me mm-hmm. that the week before you told us that Dustin was your guy, that Dustin, you know, where were you going to find somebody that had that kind of field goal kicking percentage that's available? You, he will, okay, you're right. And we, we were like, yeah, you're right about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, less than a week later, you go through the Sean Taylor thing and you cut Dustin Hopkins and you bring in a guy off the street that hasn't kicked in six years. And that was in college where his percentage in college was 64% his senior exactly. year. So, you telling me you're going to bring a guy that's never kicked in the league. His first game is going to be at Lambeau Field. Come on, <laughs> man. That's the, all those things are just. I'm sorry. I'm, I can't help but laugh, man. It's like, it's <laughs> you just, can't write it, this stuff. <laughs> ah, you can't make it up. My name is Blew It. That's why he blew it. I can well, I, I knew he was trash when I heard Blew It. I Chill. Like, I'm not, Chill. You know, I'm not going to ever ride no player. I mean, he did make the one that he got up. Um, yeah. You know, the other one was, you know, blocked, dude blocked it with his forearm. <laughs> yeah, I know what I'm saying. Like, it's just, it's wild because even that, so to me, like going into that game, because we'll talk about that game a little bit. We'll talk about that game. But going into that game, like even Ron going, for, after it was blocked, and Ron going for going for it a couple times, it already, to me, it already let me know that he ain't confident, dude. He ain't confident in the kicker. It already let me know. Like, I didn't so have to make even. make the move then? To your point. Like, you know what I'm saying, to your point. Eric, well, that's I felt was like the official lamb. That's yeah. what it was. I felt like every move that he was he made was now to to kind of appease make the, the There you go. There you go. I think yeah. every move, like, because he's been stubborn in his ways with a lot of things. Like, we fans have been asking for 
Landon Collins to go into linebacker. Then all of a sudden, now you decide to make that move. But you could have made that move a while ago. To go a witness protection. That's what they've been asking. <laughs> it's not go to linebackers, get out. Yeah. But he Literally. didn't play well. To his point, he played well at linebacker. But you but, know what? What does that say, though, man? Yeah. I, I just told somebody that the other day. My friend was like, oh, man, Landon actually played well. It, he makes $48 million guaranteed. He should play well. Why are we shocked that he yeah. – could do something well. Yeah. What that is is called coaching. Put you go. in a position to make there a play. And, and I'm starting to get to the point now where these guys can't be this terrible. It, it's yeah. got to be the schemes. It's got to be what they're being asked to do. They're being asked to do too much. They can't play downhill. They can't play fast yeah. because you got them playing soft zones and mm-hmm. – um, Benzie St. Juice in Minnesota was press man cover guy. Mm-hmm. William Jackson in Cincinnati was a press man cover guy. Bobby McCain was a guy that could come up to the box at times. And you got them guys playing off receivers with these quarterbacks they're facing. Mm-hmm. They're going to get sliced and diced all day mm-hmm. until they bring people up and let them play football. So another change that was made, Jamin Davis, he's on the field now. What were your, <laughs> thought, what were your thoughts on that? Because Basically, the fans said, it can't get any worse. Put the young man in. Let him get the experience. Let him Thanks grow, sir. especially if Coach Rivera, I'm like, I'm calling Ron, especially if they're saying this is a rebuild, right? So <laughs> play Jamin Davis. And then and Lambeau, he played. And from my vantage point, I thought he did well. What do you think? I thought he played well. I think he's been playing well when he's mm-hmm. got quality, quality reps. Yep. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's like if you're – new to something it's going to take you a while to pick it up it's like mm-hmm. if, if you play on wole and some cards or something and he's cheating you know you got to figure Possibly. out okay he, he he's cheating here and i, I figured it out now. So, i mean my whole point is you know that you can't play a guy 13 plays and then the next week he's 40 something plays that's too mm-hmm. inconsistent mm-hmm. so th- th- this week i need to see 40 something more plays and, and let's face it cole holcomb's not covering anybody out there I mean, he's another guy that will hit you for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you're asking guys to do things that aren't their strengths. And, you know, for my money, that's your first round draft pick. It, it, if, you know, if you want to get his feet wet, let him go. It can't get any worse than what he will go through right now, especially yeah. with the quarterbacks they're facing. So he'll be all the better for this in the long mm-hmm. run. Let him go through this right now. You're not going anywhere this year anyway. Yeah, I agree with that, Lake. I, I was, you know, that was the thing that I was talking about prior to him getting this playing time. It's like one, it's good to get this playing time against elite quarterbacks like this because mm-hmm. you're gonna learn from it. You know, iron sharpens iron. Um, so and then secondly, it's not like the product beforehand was that much better. It's still giving him a 30, 35, 40 points anyway. So what does it what does it matter if he gets that burn? What you want? Oh, 45 go, I mean 30 points goes to 35 <laughs> points, it goes to 40. Ooh, big deal. That's like, what I'm so, saying, man. This defense is giving up 30 points a game. And I yeah. know somebody's got on me today. Some oh, they only gave up 24. <laughs> okay. <laughs> losing, losing mindset. I mean, I'm starting to get it anyway. I'm starting to be like, you know what? That's better than 30. Um, but it is what it is, I guess. I guess. But to your point there, I'm glad he's getting the playing time. He, to me, you see a lot of potential. I see it, man. I, oh, I, no, his speed I see is it. Dumb. He got yeah. he has dumb speed out yeah. there. Yeah. And, and there were times where you saw him run down folks. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, he, he needs confidence. That's yeah. all. Once he mm-hmm. gets his confidence, you'll see him do even more things. Mm-hmm. I just know if I had a guy that fast, I'm blitzing him. He's coming that, right. That too. He's, that he's too. hiding around on an end. Mm-hmm. Uh, he might line up behind Chase, line up behind Montez and send him as opposed to them. Mm-hmm. You know, like, how can we think these things and be creative? And yet you don't see that out there by, a coach that's been coaching for 30 years. I just don't understand. I don't. I mean, everybody, folks are just stubborn. So, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm not the biggest Scott Turner fan. Everybody knows this. Um, Ray, Ray, Ray knows I'm not a big Scott Turner fan, but we've come to the, come to an agreement, come to Jesus moment. Right, Ray? We kind of agree to this. They called a good game. Like, I thought he called a decent game. I thought he his did. red zone, I thought his red zone play calling was a little dicey. But I thought he yeah. called a good game. You and your followers. I still, I still think they abandoned the run a little bit too soon, though. They abandoned the run too soon, right? I did. I, because when you came out after right. halftime, <laughs> well, when you came out after halftime, um, they go right back to passing, and, and, and then there's the tip ball that's intercepted by the yeah. line. And that yeah. changed, the, changed the tone of the game. But my thing is run the football, man. Like, like 
I understand Gibson's nicked up or whatever, but as my my saying is, if you put your pads on, you can play. Simple mm-hmm. as that. Um, I've been calling for more Jared Patterson. Like, why is he not playing more? He's he's actually without question, he's their best running back as far as the position, you know, mm-hmm. vision and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. JD McKissick's their best all around back, mm-hmm. but but but. I think Patterson is a real running back. He's a true running back. Why not give him five, six touches a game, you know, to spell those other guys? I think they're afraid of what they're going to see. Mm-hmm. So that's what that is. So, so to that, back to the, like the running back situation then. So, you know, Gibson was moved from wide receiver to running back. You know, and a lot of talk, we were like, okay, you know, a, lot of, a lot of fans were like, oh, he's, he's going to be it. He's going to be the big thing. He's going to be the premier back, the number one. All right. So, you know, we have two seasons, you know, two seasons, roughly two seasons. Um, is he that guy? Is he the, a, the top, a top back, a guy, you a featured back, or is he a guy that isn't that type of dude? Like he's like 15 carry type of back. I think he's a complimentary back. Mm-hmm. I do. I think okay. he's, I think he would be very good in that role. The role mm-hmm. that JD McKissick has. Mm, okay. I think he's a guy that can catch, you know, five balls out the backfield, maybe, maybe run 12 times. I mean, that's 17 touches a game. That's still great. Yeah. But as far as him being your home run featured back that, that puts fear in, in, in opposing defenses, that's not his, I mean, he's still learning how to play running back. I don't want anybody that's learning how to play running back, not in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, I, I need that person to hit the ground running because let's call it like it is. The easiest position to play in the NFL, if you're talented, mm-hmm. is running back. <laughs> I mean, it's just your natural yeah. ability, really, if you think about it. You're not having to learn all the plays and scripts for everything. You know, the hardest thing for a running back to pick up is pass blocking because mm-hmm. a lot of these guys have never been asked to do it. But outside of that, most uh, college great running backs come in the league and they pick right up where they left off in college because that's just what they do. Why are they not giving the ball to their, you know, best pound for pound running back, which is Jared Patterson? No, yeah, that's the thing. I don't, I don't get it myself. Um, he's a guy. I feel like that should be getting touches anyway. Like you got a three headed monster, you know, and, and especially when your quarterback is Taylor Heineke. Like, why would you want to throw the ball like thirty times if you? I mean, I don't see that's what see. Oh, see I'm trying to no like, run, running suits his style. Of, <laughs> running suits his style of play. It does if you run. It does, ball, man. It's it like, helps him get outside the pocket. That's why you yeah. see the bootleg. Run, why he, but that's why he didn't score. That's why he didn't score on the uh, on the on the quarterback scramble. You know, um, when he got down, when he, his knee was down yeah. um, at the before the goal line, and you know why he didn't score. Because as he was running and he saw defenders coming, he started thinking in his mind probably what the coaches have been so, telling, so telling him. Yeah, Get definitely. Down. As opposed to be reckless and dive and do what you did against Tampa, do what you did earlier in the year against the Giants. I mean, that's when he's making things happen. And, uh-huh. and I'd rather have a guy go out hurt because he's making things happen than, than a guy just quit on a play because yeah. you're in his head. That's mm-hmm. not the way it's supposed to be done. Lake, I think that sounds good until you realize ain't nobody behind this man. We're gonna put out there if he gets hurt. I'm not saying that he should. I would have dove in the end zone too. I don't. I think that was a bad call. I, I think. <laughs> I think that was a terrible call. You don't want to touch I don't want to watch football if a man not being touched touches the ground doesn't count as a touchdown. You know what I mean? That that's not that's that's what the old people complain about. This league is soft. Right? So it's soft though. Real soft. I'm, a, I'm a <laughs> super soft. It's super soft. Butter soft. But, and, but see, you know what? This is the thing. In fairness to the NFL, and I said this the other day on my pod, I can't believe I'm actually defending the NFL mm. because they've pampered and pacified these quarterbacks. That's why he didn't score. That's because why he didn't you got to live with yeah. that dumb rule that you created. Yeah. When right. a grown man signed up for a grown man sport, you don't see running backs laying on the ground. I, I gave myself up. <laughs> you know, to take that heat when he yeah. comes around the edge. Yeah. If you get outside the pocket, supposedly be you fair game, right? Yes. So yes. that should have been in the perfect world as a touchdown. But because mm-hmm. of that stupid rule, it was called down. The NFL has got to fix that. That's – I mean, those are like those are the Tom Brady rules. Those are for the quarterback. Yeah, that's Tom Brady. Yeah, exactly. that's what that is. But most of these guys now, and let's call it like it is, including the white quarterbacks, they're running. Josh yeah. Allen, they will run you over. Yes. So you got to take those hits. 
somewhere came right now saying, damn, they ain't do this for me when I was running. <laughs> I feel bad for you, Cam. You know I want you in D.C. I'm not going to lie. Cam, you know, you know I want you in D.C. Cam, you know I want you. Cam, you know, hey, Cam, you know I want you in D.C. I'm probably one of the few people who want you in D.C. Um, but, like, back to – um, so I, I agree with you about Taylor Heineke. He's Taylor Heineke. He should run. He should take the hit. Like, it gets to a point where, like, you got to know who you are. Like, know your know your place in the NFL and on the team. Like, you're not – you, it's like your one shining moment. It's like the replacements. What's like what's like wait, Shane Falco or whatever his name Shane is? Falco. Like that's who you are. That's who you are. All right. Like you ain't go look, 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 if you get hurt, it is what it is. I'm sorry, it sounds jacked up. It is what it is. But you gotta maximize it, bro. Like I know he's and to himself, he's like, Yeah, man, if I if I get hurt, this could be it. But bro, you the type of player, hey, then let it be it. Cause you gotta go out. That's the type of player you are. That is the type of player you are. You gotta try. You gotta try, man. Sorry. Uh, sorry. Ha, ha, ha. Had to keep it 100. I'm sorry. It hurts to say that, but it's the truth. You don't agree with me, Ray? You don't agree with me? It's, it's, it's not compare? that I agree with you. Um, I just <laughs> I just feel like I don't I don't know what his thinking is, but I know that man has an endorsement. Taylor Heineke <laughs> has an endorsement now with a beer company. He sees the potential to earn more money and he's going to make sure he does everything he can to earn as much that as possible while he man. has while he has this chance to play in the league. Because Taylor Heineke ain't supposed to be here. This is Scott Turner's baby right here. And this, and <laughs> therefore, Scott Turner needs to fall with them regardless of whether he called a good game or not. This is your guy. Well, so, your guy. For you. they listen, keep up and now results. he's making money. He's making say money. What? Well, I, I, I'll tell you this. They keep up these results. You know, they're going to be bringing Heineke's <laughs> together <laughs> on somebody's couch watching Wait. the game because they won't be coaching and playing at them. <laughs> But yeah, he's like, they, when there. they call him like Taylor Bud Lightkey like or something like that, because he, he's with Bud Light, he's not even with Heineken, which is hilarious. But regardless, the man, they don't want because Heineken's because Heineken's a smart. They know that they know he. Never mind. I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so not hold on, like, like we, we we go we gonna go to the defense real quick because Bolay and I had a spirited argument after the, the the Green Bay Packers game that this defense is no longer a get right quarterback defense, meaning. Every quarterback from Matt Ryan to Daniel Jones, whoever was struggling coming in would get right against this D. But yeah. he said Teddy Bridgewater, no, that ain't gonna happen because this D played well against Aaron Rodgers. Is that true? And and what do you expect? What did you think about the defense though in general? And I heard your thoughts about Jamin and um Landon Collins, but as a whole, because our, our guy Chase is still taking a beating amongst Washington fans, which isn't fair, oh, but so still <laughs> I mean, listen, the defense played better than what they've played, mm-hmm. but it still wasn't good. I mean, look, come on, man. You guys you got some sacks. I mean, these guys are getting paid to do that. So why are we having moral victories? That's that shows you how low things have gotten here. You know, you got you got two Olay, sacks up two, in there, Olay. and all of a sudden they look. are 86 bears. Come on, man. Just, look, man, just, look, look, look. They this Aaron Rodgers is a bad dude. What they they 24 is good for them. Like 24 is good. Now you got Teddy coming. Teddy shouldn't be scoring 24. Teddy don't have no, he don't got no Jared Judy. He don't got no, yeah, see, he don't got no Judy because Judy out. He don't uh, got KJ, no, he don't KJ got no Hamlin. I know I got your man. He don't got your man. So so he the web the weapons are limited. The Saints had nobody. This the Saint James Except for Kamara. They That's play it. bad. Look, look, they had Atlanta Collins playing safety. Hell, and and Atlanta Collins is playing safety. He ain't playing safety no more. <laughs> don't they have, don't they have uh don't they have doesn't uh they got bombs. They got still have, yeah, and they have Cortland. Uh, Sutton, Sutton, Sutton. He all right. I mean, he all right. Yeah, he's I mean, special. I mean, they got Melvin right. Gordon. They have Melvin it's, Gordon. It's six, four, two, I mean, watch this stop. Well, I give him credit. They stopped the run, though. I give him that. They stopped the run. I guarantee you. I put money on it that uh, Denver scores twenty one or more. Twenty one. I. I mean, twenty one's not bad. I'll take twenty one. I wouldn't bet. That. I would not bet. That. I would not take that bet. <laughs> I'll take twenty one. I mean. 20 if they wait, wait 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 are they do they have the same game plan they had against like green bay because they what do the game plan they gonna have because i mean they look it's got, i'm dealing with scott turner you never know what you're gonna get <laughs> i know you're talking, what? Defense, no. you're talking about defensively though right no yeah. no i'm talking about offense because offense see, the see that's the thing offense offense. The defense. but see denver uh, defense okay. is decent it is know? good it is they, good. their defense is decent so now Scott may try to throw the ball. It, it, you know, so it's just going to be a slow game. Remember, you're going to the altitude. It's going to be chilly there. So, again, I'm sorry, bro, my hoodie's out now. So, so the thing <laughs> is, you think about it, though. If they try to go up there and get into a shootout, they're going to lose. 
Yes. You must flat out say that. Yes. They have to slow this down, make it ugly. Basically what they were doing with Green Bay, it kind of was working. I, I think they were in shock that they were in the game for so long. I, think I, so I truly believe that. They were in shock. Like this is, this might be our blueprint. They don't need to be in a high flying offense, mm-hmm. you know. Um, a defense that's not giving up any points. Their their blueprint is defense going to give up some points, but they got to make enough plays to get the offense the ball to make their plays. Mm-hmm. You can't get in the red zone three times and come away with nothing. Nothing, right? Pathetic. So so let's let's call it like it is. I know all all three of you feel this way. This is definitely a winnable football game in Denver. Yeah. But <laughs> with that said, that's the that's the 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 side of me that has to try to sell something positive <laughs> the, inner, the inner part of me says they're gonna get ran out the building again there because Man, they don't so know bad. how to win how do they we get do. to this point like i'm sorry how did you get to this point because <laughs> i've never seen somebody more optimistic about this franchise than, than you i could i got you in my head pentagon city this team is still the most important team. I don't care if the Nats win a World Series. They still be the happens. most important team. The Wizards, they should the Wizards be the ones. I mean, you know, but but Blue and yeah. Heineke are the most important guys in town. <laughs> what does that tell you? Where are we? Listen, man, we we listen. Not to go to politics here, but there's a lot of us that voted for the president. So, 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 I, no comment, us, no comment. No comment. Like Ron, Ron Rivera, perfect hire, you know, voice some discipline, and he has without question. I'm, I'm gonna give him all the credit in the world. Their practices are organized, they get after it. But is his coaching methods, is it, is, are they archaic now? You know, is it, has it passed him where? he can't reach into the extra part of, of somebody's chest that he needs to because this team doesn't play inspired. They just don't. Mm. And Good point. That, that goes back to your coach. So again, I got to, my job is to tell the truth, mm-hmm. you know, is to, is to be as upfront and honest and unbiased as possible. Mm. And right now, they are not a good football team. Oh, no. It yeah. shows. And guys guys get mad. They see me standing there on the sidelines. I'm not going nowhere. You can't miss this. You know, but <laughs> I say all the time, Bobby McCain, <laughs> who got mad with us, you know, said, hey, you know, when we start, we turn this around, make sure y'all writing the same thing. <laughs> no, I'm going to write that you turned it around and you're playing well. But until that time, I'm going to write that you stink right now because mm. that's what we have to do. Mm. If you're worrying about what we're writing, then you ain't doing no your wonder time. somebody going by you on the field because <laughs> you're worrying about the wrong thing. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's facts. Yo, so Rivera, I know he came out last week. I was upset when he said, I almost wish we didn't make the playoffs. I know those weren't his exact words, but I'm like, that just set a, a negative tone. Heading in, you know, to <laughs> uh, the, the Saints game, and I know he's overwhelmed by just the the overall culture of this organization. When she said, "I knew it was gonna be tough," but I also think that Herney is gonna be somebody who's gonna have to make personnel decisions along with Mayhew because this was a Rivera draft as well. You know, John yeah. Bates and Cameron Cheeseman, like some of his picks didn't make sense. We love Deami Brown, um, we love Sam Cosby, but some of his picks didn't make sense. And if you look at the history of like Marty Herney, who built a defense or just just to stop Michael Vick and it turned into some ballers on that defense. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, maybe he needs to let the personnel decisions be handled by those guys and then just focus on the X and O's. But coaching. From, from right. What, oh, coaching. Right. So but like what you're saying is maybe that is a problem for him, too. I don't know where to go with this. Well, well, well this is this is the other thing. When you think of his teams that won in Carolina, what were the two most prevalent things that you remember about those teams? O- outside of Cam, of course. The defense. Defense, yeah. And what uh, else? Running. What was it? Running football. That's it. That's yeah, yeah. it. They were a defensive team that ran the ball and ran the ball again and again and again. Mm-hmm. That's not what I see here. No. This is a finesse football team. <laughs> and – that team in Carolina, Josh Norman got paid off of pressing people, got 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 paid off of being an Odell Beckham's ass. Let's call it yeah, like it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. These guys playing 10 yards off. Uh-huh. They're playing zones. So, like, what <laughs> happened here? Like, what happened? Okay. 
Is that no. Del Rio or is that is that is that Rivera? Listen, you the coach. If I'm the <laughs> coach, you're gonna do what I tell you to do. I mean, yeah. it's as simple as that. You know, you're gonna get me fired. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you're not running anything I don't tell you to do, get me fired. Yeah, but I mean, and I'm and I'm not even trying to sound like you know, I'm gonna be some dictator. I'm saying I bought you here to be on my staff. Well, I have to have my own philosophy that I need you guys to fall in line with. If your way is working better, then we'll do that. But if if you're telling me that that's Jack Del Rio's way, then then Ron need to come in and say, no, 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 no. We need to get back to how I need it because this isn't working. Mm. That doesn't even look like what they did last year. It doesn't. It's not what they did last year. That's the problem. It's not what they did last year. Those guys last year were running around the field pushing each other after tackles, gang tackling. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm looking now and I'm like, these dudes look like they don't want it. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, collectively at the same time. Mm-hmm. I just haven't seen all 11 at the same time. Yeah, Landon looked better. He did. He, he really did. Jamie yeah. Davis looked better. Um, the defensive line was looking better. So you ask yourself, well, what happened? Well, what happened was the offense didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. So it's it's like you can't get it all on the same page. Then when you get some momentum going, you get a nice drive going, your field goal kicker comes on, gets his, gets his shot <laughs> blocked, like a whole body block. <laughs> and I'm like, why can't they ever put it together? It's it's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I have never in my life. Now, I've covered a couple teams. I have never in my life seen anything like this. And this uh it gets worse by the year and it makes us cynical. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Man, let's come on. We we want to root for a winner. We want we want to, you know how much money I would make? <laughs> uh, how much money you guys would make your show if this team was winning? Seriously? I told Wole that before the show. He did that. <laughs> hey, hey, I want to ask more question though, real quick, because Mo, at what point, and then you guys, of course, jump in. At what point do the players have to be accountable? Because, like, in in, in New York, because you're a Giants fan, Mo, the players play hard regardless of whether they like Joe Judge or not. They, they sure always is. compete. <laughs> but for some reason, we're not seeing that hit of body language. Uh, Lake, you tweeted about that during the Atlanta game. Like, what? why do they look so flat out there? Like, where's the energy? The defense just look as though they don't want to be there. So they what is that? <laughs> I'm defeated. asking Mo, like, what do you think that is? So how much is on the players, too, to step up? Jonathan Allen is like, I want to be out there, but I can't speak for everybody else. I, I know Mo, Mo got it, but I go ahead. You take it, Mo, because I know <laughs> what it is. I, I, I think it comes down to scheme. I think a lot of players are playing out of their comfort zone. Um, I, I spoke about William Jackson being a, a key addition in the offseason, and if you're not going to let him do what he does best, he's a waste of $13 million. So mm-hmm. um, because he looks like a – He's he's getting embarrassed on a weekly basis, like mm-hmm. he's not even Dang. by number one mm-hmm. receivers, oh, yeah. right? And um, you have a lot of pieces that don't fit right now the puzzle, and ultimately players get dejected eventually mm-hmm. if they know that they're going into a game plan that's going to get them cream, right? So the, it's a lot. I mean, it's on the player. It's, it's some of it is on the players because you have to take pride in what you do. Like your last, if, if not for my, if not for the name on the front, at least my last name got to be, you know what I mean, got to be represented well. And then the coaches are putting these guys in bad situations and it, it's, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess. Well, it's like a general leading, uh, you know, his troops right into the middle of the fire with no plan, with no, no escape route, no nothing. You're just going in there, you're going to get killed. And that's kind of how this this comes across. You know, I agree with Mo that this, this comes down to scheme. I think literally what's happening is they're getting information overload during the week of practice. Mm-hmm. And then when they get to the games, they're mentally dead. You know, they're they're mentally not able to just play, play fast, play free, make plays. Um, and I said this before with Chase. The worst thing that happened to Chase was he was here for a year. He's been coached up now. Mm, mm. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> he came out of Ohio State. It was him doing all them things that they, the Bosa's do and all that. They mm, still want point. coach to do that. Now he's getting coached to go drop back in coverages and stuff too. Mm, good point. I mean, come on, man. Like, again, 
I'm not no coach. Well, I'm a basketball coach, but I'm not a football coach. Mm. I, I can honestly say whether it's basketball, whether it's football, hell, whether it's ballet or gymnastics, <laughs> you have to be able to reach people to bring out their best. Mm. And if you can't bring their best out in them, you can't coach them. You, you just can't because they don't trust you at that point. They look at it like you embarrassing me out here. You think William Jackson's getting beat thinking it's because I suck? <laughs> No, it's because you probably got all these different techniques that I need to be doing. And it's Over just too him. much going on in their mind. They can't play. Can't play last free. Week was, I was going to say last week was probably the closest I've seen them to just maybe like somewhat like last year. Somewhat. They were just out running after people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and was coming to Aaron constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what you want to see. But they have to sustain that. And if they can't beat Denver... Or, or, or at least give them a run, it's going to be, wow, <laughs> super long. Ooh. So if they don't, if they don't beat Denver, is Heineke, is Heineke done? No, I, I would never take him out. He's their best right. quarterback on this roster. Thank, thank you, Lake. <laughs> Ray, Ray believes that it's, it's, it, that's the last, that's the last straw of Heineke. I don't There's argue never, which way. He's never coming out because yeah. the thing is, because the thing is, what has he done that's truly detrimental to the team. Not, not a thing. Not a thing. I mean, but not be, not I mean, he's not good, though. But, yeah, I know you're talking about not to this team. Because this team's bad every which way. So I understand what you're saying. Wait, see, um, this was the discussion we were in the middle of right when you hopped on. Because <laughs> I'm saying if, if if they release Dustin Hopkins and Sam Blewett, what makes you think they won't bench Heineke? That's all I'm saying. Because. Because, he, 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 because, because one, he's the quarterback. Exactly. He's the quarterback. The other was the kicker. And these coaches think that kickers are inexpendable anyway. And, and let's be honest, it's not like they need Dustin Hopkins to make five, six field goals a game. He was 12 for, he was 12 for 14. That's yeah. pretty good, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's just that the, the two misses were more magnified than anything. That's your offense, right? <laughs> don't come back and tell me oh you know when he missed the field goal against the 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 chiefs in the first half it was a momentum swing they were going to beat you anyway you could have you could have you could have went out and had adam venetary from new england come out they were going to beat you anyway so stop making these things up and man up this not coming on the no field goal kicker. The Giants <laughs> game only came down to him because the Giants handed the game to him. Let's call it like it is. Man, this, <laughs> this is not how the season was supposed to go. But you hey, know what? So, go ahead. I'm not going to argue. Go ahead, Rick. I mean, Wally, I'm going to call you Ray. I'm going to call you myself. I know. It's, it's all good, bro. It's all good. So, <laughs> you know, so, like, you already know, we we used to vibe, the, I mean, uh, Kevin O'Connell, who's now the offensive coordinator see look so okay i just said it today so, okay that's who they should have kept exactly so that was my so the kevin o'connell situation they didn't keep him was that more because you know um ron wanted to do a favor to north to, to north or was that something that he didn't interview right with not with, with ron see i think what it was is to be honest these old school guys got to bring their guys in that's just mm-hmm. the way it is mm-hmm. <clears throat> whether you want to call it a favor for a friend or just somebody I'm familiar with, yeah. you know, they still the same thing at the end of the day. Yeah. Bottom line was I thought Ron Rivera had a slam duck waiting for him mm-hmm. to just name Kevin O'Connell, his offensive coordinator. And then you could focus on the defense mm-hmm. and it would have worked. And, and I'm going to say this as crazy as this sounds, Kevin O'Connell had Dwayne Haskins playing. He did play very well that year. That year, that for three, that three game, four games, that three game stretch, right? Steven Sims had yeah. him playing. Mm-hmm. Kelvin Harmon had him playing. None of them are on the roster. And that's a problem in itself. Mm-hmm. You cannot draft in the second round a running back who's not on the roster. I understand what he did and he shouldn't be on the roster. Mm-hmm. But nevertheless, he's not on the roster. And that's mm-hmm. Darius Geis. Mm-hmm. You can't have a first round quarterback set your organization back five years now because. He's not on the roster. Mm. Um, you can't have a first round draft pick at wide receiver that's not on your roster after three years. I mean, I mean those are Dotson. Yeah, I didn't go say that. Those, those <laughs> secret are, weapon. Those are, secret those weapon. are misses, man, that you can't recover from. You can do that in the later rounds, but mm-hmm. you can't do that in your first two, three rounds. 
those are your slam dunk players. You got to mm-hmm. hit on that. If, especially if you're bad, you got to mm-hmm. need those, you need those guys to make immediate contributions. You, you can't wait for people. And, and this is the problem. And I said, we need to start the hashtag. So Washington, it is so Washington. Mm-hmm. They're going to stink this year and have a high draft pick and there's no quarterbacks coming out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, there's not really anybody. The kid from Liberty, everybody likes the kid from Liberty. I mean, because there's nobody else to like. I know. Um, yeah, Willis. Yeah, Willis. I mean, everybody. he's not a quarterback. Kid, you, kid, he's not a quarterback that you give your top five pickups. No, no, sir. No, no, sir. No, 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 sir. And the kid from Pittsburgh, you do not give your top five no. pickups. No, sir. No, sir. So, I, so, I was, so now you're gonna be stuck with a Mariota, somebody like that. No, man. You, you, you just. You're my guy too, man. That's my guy. My there's guy. only two options for them. And I'm going to say one that actually makes sense now, the more I think about it. If I'm Washington and I don't have to part with the hardly anything, maybe a fifth, <laughs> you know, and I throw a player in there or something if I had to, I think I, I think I might take a flyer on uh, on Tua. That's what I'm saying. Get Tua. Because he's actually not playing He's bad. playing good. I, all this, like I'm telling you, I, see, I, I – so everybody laughed at, I mean, I mean, it's off topic. Everybody laughed at Kwame Brown by talking about people spitting a narrative and then kind of ruining your brand. Like that's what the, that's what about, that's what the same is happening to Tua. Because Tua only started like how many, only a handful of games. Like right. We've already labeled him a bust. He started, he haven't even started 16 games in and the Miami last two stinks. weeks. And Miami <laughs> stinks. In two weeks right now, the last two weeks, Tua is thrown for his 70 uh, completion percentage in one game, 80 through for 300 yards, and through for 291. Four touchdowns this, last week. Last week. So, so Ole, this is what you do. If you're Washington, you get them now. You don't want to see any more. Yeah, you don't want to see any more. I would get because, them now. Be, yeah, because because the more you see, the more Miami's like, well, well, well. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's, so it's you, crazy. You get that now. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you expect him to play, like, dude, only play literally maybe 10 games. Y'all acting like he's supposed to be a world beater. Nah, no, it don't work that way. He's he now showing he- you progression. He is showing is, you. Is, is he better than Heineke? Hell yeah. That's not even a of question. Course. Course. So, so again, we sitting here talking about what do they do next year? Yeah. Are those quarterbacks that are going to come in, are, not they, are they going to hit the field week one? No. Oh. So you almost have to get yourself a current quarterback. And I don't want a has been. I don't mm-hmm. want, I don't want somebody that's been, you know, you know, was, was great five, six years ago and they just couldn't do it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to try to rekindle their career. I'm tired of, I'm tired of people coming here, rekindling the bag when they get here mm-hmm. and, and all they want is the bag, you know, <laughs> the up and Tyson's too, and all that stuff. <laughs> Come on, man. Like I need somebody who wants to be here to play and ball out. Mm. I, I, we just haven't seen it. So you got to get the quarterback because nobody's going to want to come here if you don't have a quarterback. I it's agree, the- man. I no totally problem. agree. I totally agree. Hey, Lake, man, thanks for being on, my man. Let our listeners know what you have coming down the pike and how they can catch you on social media. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, Lake Lewis, on Instagram, Facebook, Lake Lewis Jr. Uh, the podcast is the After Practice Podcast with Lake Lewis. You can go on um, you know, Apple, Spotify, Heart Radio, most of the major carriers for audio, and then you can watch it on YouTube. And then, of course, you can check out, uh, you know, the work from myself and several other great people uh-huh. doing some good stuff at SportsJourney.com, breaking down pretty much the D.C. sports scene. Dope, man. Dope. Like, we appreciate you happy for being on. And also subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, and Google Podcasts. Search all Bergen and Gold or anything with the Urban Sports Scene. Also tweet us at Urban Sports Scene and hit us up on our Urban Sports Scene Facebook page. Uh, anyway, appreciate Lake for being on. You've been listening to All Burgundy and Gold Everything with the Urban Sports Scene on Fox Sports Radio 96.9 FM and 1340 AM. Hope well, Virginia. Four ages. Yiddy. Deuces. A mega. Lead us out, big homie.